Jared Falk. Hi. And today we're going to do a lesson on how to make your cheap drum set sound amazing. Now, when I got my first drum set, it was ridiculously, horribly, insanely bad looking. Um, and it sounded as, as bad as it looked. And I had no idea how to make it sound better. I just thought that was the case. It's always going to sound horrible. Mm -hmm. um, so today we're going to talk about how to take that drum set and without buying anything else, without buying new heads, without buying new cymbals. And so we're going to show you how to make your drum set go from sounding like this. to sounding like this. And I just want to mention that we're not using any special audio techniques or tricks or special compressors or special mics. Yeah. What do we have up here for mics? It's just we're doing, we're doing a stereo pair on the overheads, we're doing snare mic and then a kick mic, but it's really naturally mixed. Yeah. So it's like what you guys hear, and I, and I promise you this, what you guys hear in the mix, this is really important to us, is what we're hearing in the room. And as you could have heard in the sample, it really does not sound good. We're not going to make it sound better in the audio mm -hmm. um, um, post-production. So we really want to get a really nice natural room sound as if you were in the room with us. Yeah. So this drum set cost us $125. <laughs> I found it on a site called uh, a Bidding Wars site on, on Facebook. And so someone posted a picture of it and I, I bid $125. Bucks. And here it is. And so it's a... It's, uh, exactly how I got it, all the hardware, all the cymbals, all the drum heads, they're original, it looks like. Yeah, oh yeah. No one took the time to replace no, them. No, 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 no. And so what we're gonna do is run you through, through three separate tips that are really gonna help your drum set sound better. Now whether you have a, a cheap drum set or even a, a high-end drum set, yeah. these tips are gonna be very, very applicable to you. Yeah. The first tip we wanna talk about is tuning. Okay, so you Huge. had a really interesting point about what you say you do first as far as tuning. Yeah, so when I, I have an interesting relationship with tuning. I still kind of struggle with it. It's something I'm really still growing into. I have a lot left to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, something that took me a long time to learn actually is why, what I feel like is the most important thing for me is to get the head in tune with itself. Mm -hmm. So to make sure that the tension is even all along the head, that none of the lugs are way tighter or way looser than the other. So you can worry about getting the relationship between the top and the bottom head um, correct at a later stage. But for me, the, the most important thing is just getting the head in tune with itself because I feel like you can get away with a lot if you, if you can do that. So the snare is really is kind of loose yeah. and there's a ton of overtone, tons of, ton of overtones that just make it sound horrible. So let's see if we can get um, rid of some of that just with the tuning first and then maybe some muffling later. But I think in the first thing that we really want to focus on is just the tuning. So. Yeah. so what I'd recommend you guys do first is kind of figure out, do you like a tighter snare sound or a looser snare yeah. sound? Decide that. And then if you know you like a tighter snare sound, which I believe you do. Oh, I do. So I would start off in this case, just to keep things really simple, is just tuning it up all the way around. Mm -hmm. Once we tune it up all the way around once, then we're gonna go around and actually pitch match the lugs. And that's what Kobus is talking about when he says get the drum in tune with itself. So, yeah. so do you mind just going around and Let's cranking see what it up? Sounds like. Well, that is insane. <laughs> so it's definitely way loose down there. That's crazy. So let's see. I was just like a half a turn. Go right. all the way around a half a turn. Yeah. So a lot of people use something called a drum dial or they use any sort of iPhone apps to, to help tune or find the right pitch. Uh, there's something called the TuneBot and we're not going to be using any of that. No. Okay? We're just using our ears, which I think everyone needs to learn how to use their ears. Yeah. So, so what do we got here? Let's see what this sounds like. Already a lot better. Now we're still getting those overtones, and that's yeah. a, uh, because the bottom head, obviously, but it's also because the top head isn't in tune with itself. itself. So now that we're going to start pitch matching the lugs, what we need to do is kind of have a starting point. So basically, there, what I do is I just choose a lug. And so let's choose this one right yeah. here. So tap it beside it. That's going to be our starting point. Now we're going to try and match everything to this, this uh, pitch. Yeah. So if you sing that note, I'm not gonna sing it, <laughs> but that's what it sounds like. Okay. So, let's, so this one's a little bit higher, so yeah. we're gonna bring that down a tiny bit. Okay. And we're gonna get it, focus on getting it close. It, to get it absolutely 100% perfect, it's not gonna happen right now. The head is extremely old. Mm. We're not gonna worry about that. We're just gonna get it as close as possible. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going around. Another thing you want to make sure you do is hit in the exact same spot on the head. Yeah. Cool. 
That's still higher though. A little bit. See, I'm, I'm obsessive about these things, that's why it takes me forever. So another tip I want to give you guys is, if you have a brand new head, you might not want to use a drum key. You can just use your finger. Yeah, that's right. The drum key kind of could damage the head. Yeah, but in this case... That's a good point. That's a very good point. The, the drum <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we've got it close. We could obviously sit here all day and we could try and just absolutely perfect it. Yeah. But the, the purpose here is to get the head in tune with itself. Yeah. And now we can decide if we want to go higher or lower. Yeah. Um, but let's just put on the snare wires, hit it, and see what sounds. So we've lost a lot of those overtones. Yeah. So I think we're at a good point where we could actually flip the drum over, tune the bottom head um, a lot tighter. I would always tune the bottom head on the snare tighter I agree. than the top head. Yeah, same here. And then, uh, and then we can, again, fine tune the batter side head. Yeah. I think you can sit here. I'll spectate. All right, so this bottom head actually has a few nicks in it. Yeah. So we want to be really careful when we're playing around with this. Yeah. Um, now, one thing we can do here is we can, this is a trick I learned, just put this underneath here, so we can actually... Oh, snap! Yeah. Put, I had no idea. Put it in tune with itself. Because usually you'd have to hold the snares up the whole time, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is higher. I want to yeah. go with this as my main. I agree. Yeah. I think something that I really struggled with in the beginning was I had really high standards yeah. and, I, and I wasn't that good at tuning, still learning, mm -hmm. so I would get frustrated very easily. I know what sound I want, but I can't get it within 10 minutes and then I get right. super frustrated. So I think the biggest thing is just patience, you guys. Like just really, um, if you have a sound in mind, just like really be patient and realize that it takes a long time to become really good at tuning. Um, well, not to become really good, like the basics are quite simple, but. Um, I remember in the, in the beginning, I got really frustrated really quickly, so don't be too hard on yourself. Yeah. It's definitely something that develops over time. Yeah. So I've got it close to being in tune with itself. Now I'm going to go around the whole head and do around a quarter turn just to bring it up even a little bit more. Yeah. Because I, I like the bottom head nice and tight. Yeah. A nice response on those wires, especially on a more inexpensive drum, with an inexpensive drum head. Absolutely. Um, don't, you don't have to be you don't have to be worried about uh, it being perfect. Yeah. Like Kobe said. Is this over here? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's hear how it sounds. Oops. It sounds a lot better. A lot better. I would bring it up just a tiny bit more. I think so. That quarter turn. So much better than when it started, oh, though. So much better. And I think that's a tricky thing to realize in the beginning is the fact that with cheaper drums, if there's a ton of overtones, the, the cheap and easy way to get rid of them is to just go for, for a higher tuning. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, talk it. Okay, listen to the difference. The bottom has a tiny bit higher. Yeah. I don't know if, the, if anyone can hear that yeah. uh, through the mics, but it's just a tiny bit higher. And so we want them close. I don't want the gap to be like this far away. Exactly. You want them to be around to bend. this far away. Yeah. And so I think this is good. I think this is sounding, you know, a heck of a lot better. Yeah, <laughs> so much better. Yeah. Okay, so let's move to the, the toms. And we're going to go through one tom here, and then we're going to um, let you guys figure out all other toms by yourself. Yeah. Because just for, for keeping the, the time. Keeping it nice and short. short. There's tons of videos on yeah. tuning the toms. You guys have some videos on tuning the toms. Yeah. So if you guys really want more in-depth um, exploration of that, then just check out those videos. But we're going to yeah. keep it nice and simple. Okay, so let's hear this. 
That sounds interesting. It's an acquired taste. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in this case, what I would do is I would start completely fresh with the toms. So what I mean by that is loosen everything off completely. Yeah. Okay? Um, this is the easiest way, rather than start trying to start um, from who knows where, like who knows yeah. how tight the lugs are. So you're going, you're going below finger tight. Yeah, so now I can actually loosen everything with my fingers. Yeah. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten them as tight as I can go with, with my fingers. fingers. Yeah. And my right hand is stronger than my left, so I always do oh, everything I see. with my right. That's actually a good idea. Okay. Now I'll go around once, just do a quarter turn. Okay. So finger tight first. Yeah. Quarter turn all around. Yeah. Okay, there we go. That's our gonna be our starting point. Immediately sounds Immediately. Way better. Yeah. We never even touched the So, so I mean just that was crazy. Yeah. So you did you just went below finger tight and then you got finger tight as mm -hmm. tight as you could with your fingers, and then you just did a quarter turn all around. Yeah, simple as that. Now, that's surprising actually. I will bring it up a tiny bit more, probably another eighth turn, just because it was a little low for me. Yeah. Okay. Then we're going to do this is kind of like the, the quick path to getting the head in tune with itself. Yeah. What you were talking about, which I yeah. think is great. And then go around and, and actually tension it. Yeah. So now let's talk about the the relation between the the top head and the bottom head. What do you like? Let's be really controversial. Let's say there's only one way. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on oh gosh, so many things. What I like to do is the, the bottom head a little bit tighter okay. than the top head. Yeah. But really, you guys, this comes down to personal preference. Okay. Where you want the note to bend, um, how full you want the drum to sound. It, it depends on exactly what you want. There's tons of different things you can do. Yeah. In this case, we're just going to tune it a little bit higher than the top head. Yeah. Okay, so the bottom head a little bit higher. Um, let's listen to it. It's the, the, the batter. So it's already a it's little bit It's quite close, higher. yeah. It's already a little bit higher. We're, we're going to start just like we started on the other one, though. Or on the so just batter. below finger tight. Yeah. And this is 12, 13, 16, right? Yeah. Okay, so tighten everything back up. Go around with the right hand. <laughs> A non-stupid hand. <laughs> okay. Quarter turn. And let's do an eighth turn as well. It should be at a similar point. But I think we maybe even want to go just a pinch up. Yeah, definitely. Now, pitch matching the, the drum obviously takes time. Yeah. And if you play any melodic instruments, like piano or guitar, it's going to make it easier because you have a better understanding of, of listening for the pitches. So mm. if you're having problems, just ask your, your piano player, your keyboard player friend, or your guitar player friend, and um, they should be able to help you. Yeah. So, <laughs> and I think another thing that I, always, that I struggled with in the beginning is I didn't know whether to listen to the attack or the sustain because sometimes mm -hmm. the note changes, right? right? Like it goes from one pitch to another. So. Um, regardless of which one you choose, just commit. So just go, I'm gonna learn, I'm gonna listen to the attack every yeah. single time. So when you tap it, you listen to the initial attack and you match everything to that, right. as opposed to kind of trading off between attack and sustain. Right. Okay. Mm. There you go. So this is a tiny bit higher than the bottom. Head. Yeah. Let's just bring this back around. As you can see, I'm not concerned about the hardware. <laughs> Well, let's listen to it. It's 
sprinkle some overtones, but it sounds so much better. So much better. So we're yeah. going to get to how to actually control some of those overtones. We're obviously using an old head. This isn't like an Evans head like we're used to using. Yeah, exactly. Brand new head. Yeah. And so what we need to do now is we need to go through and do the exact same thing on all the toms. Yeah. So let's just quickly do let's that. Let's do that. So I'm just going all the way down below for the height. So, your first drum set, Jared. Nine, late uh, 60s Pearl. Wow! Yeah. Mine was a Thunder Percussion. Ooh. I've never heard of Thunder Percussion since. Well, they probably went out of business. <laughs> probably. <laughs> so, finger tight. It was like this, this exact sizes? 12, it was, 12, 13, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Standard. And it, but I think a 20 kick, Okay. not a 20. And, and the, the, the toms had four lugs each. Four? One, two, three, four. Oh my. Not kidding, dude. It's like a Walmart special. Yeah, it's horrible. And I still have one of the, I still have the uh, 12. Yeah. So I think that's finger tight all the way around. So now, eighth turn, right? I would do a quarter turn. Quarter turn. Yeah. All the way around. Yeah. The and no star pattern. And then let's hear it after a quarter turn. No. Right now. Yeah. So it's too low. So I, oh, I, that's rad though. It's like. <laughs> so it's, now an eighth turn. It's crazy how fast it starts sounding yeah. better. Because we also want to talk about in how to tune the toms to each other, right? It's not absolutely about, in relationship yeah. to each other. Yeah. They're a family of drums, right? It's not like they're not individuals. So, uh, I think it needs to come up a tiny bit more. But and it's we, going down very yeah. aggressively. There's a very sharp down bend. Yeah. So, so I think the bottom head is, is uh, it needs to be tightened for sure. Right. Alright. Good. Now let's flip it over and... Uh, <coughs> Don't scratch the paint job! <laughs> I was... <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. yeah. So I'll loosen it off completely. All the way down. <clears throat> and then I got a Rogers kit. That was your second one. White Rogers. Rogers. Yeah. Is that does that exist still? I don't know. I don't think they're still in business, but there's still some really cool Rogers kits out there. Oh. Wish my I would have kept it. My second kit was a old school 80s Toma Superstar. Toma Superstar, like the okay. old school superstar. Yeah, those are still around. Yeah. They're good kits. It's got like a really vintage sound. I think it was like a like a 22 by 14 probably. Yeah. yeah. Old school. Okay, so finger tight. Yep. And then we just go quarter turn. Quarter turn. Do, a, do I'd say do a quarter and then an, an eighth. I know some people are like, why don't you just do what is a quarter plus an eighth? I believe it's like... A quarter plus an eighth is... Like, oh, it's less than half. It's three eighths. Three eighths. Yeah, so it's low. So another quarter turn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty bad. I was just thinking about struggling to add a quarter and an eighth. <laughs> That's pretty good. Just put it in tune with itself. <clears throat> Which one? I would go for the the lower one because it's a little bit. Yeah, that's yeah, so a lower that tiny. Oh, that's quite a bit. Okay. That's pretty good. It's 
See, this, this is where it gets tricky for me. Because I know it's close, but it sounds it's way fun. lower. Well, you also hit a little bit farther away. Yeah. Yeah, you can go a tiny bit higher. It's a little bit, now a little bit lower. It, it, it still Never. sounds... Why is that? Why does it still sound... Like it sounds yeah. like... Oh, see, if I don't hit as hard, yeah. you don't get all those overtones. So you go a tiny bit higher. Tiny bit, tiny bit. There you go. Cool. Great, so then let's hit the, hit the middle of that, that head. Okay, and then... Uh, perfect, so it's, it's pretty... Uh, it's, it sounds like close. So the same thing on the floor tom. Floor tom is a little bit um, different because some people have different preferences about tuning, how much tone they want. Mm. Some people want more of a thump. You know, they want, almost want it to sound like a bass drum, which is like such a crazy amount of attack, but not a ton of sustain. Exactly. Or not, not a really round note. And so uh, we're just going to make it sound more like a, th a thump with tons of attack. We're not going to make it ring out for uh, forever. Yeah. But also not dead. No. It's a little bit of yeah. sustain. And to be honest, that's, I think that's kind of my ideal yeah. floor tom sound. Is mostly beef and bottom end, but mm -hmm. then definitely with some sustain. Especially as I play those gorgeous DWs, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> they, uh, they've got so much to give, you know, you don't want to like choke them. <clears throat> exactly. So. Okay, so that's finger tight. So exact same rule applies. So I would say bring it up a quarter turn, that's probably pretty much it. Oh, okay. So we're going to keep it relatively low. Oh, that's too much. <clears throat> yeah, now let's hit it. It's a bit of a rattle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bring it up a another eighth. So do we have consensus on what a quarter plus an eighth is? Yeah, it's a three eighths. It's not divisible, you can't Oh, that's right, two eighths yeah. plus one eighth, yeah. <laughs> Boom! Well done, Jared. It sounds like that because the bottom. The bottom head. head. So let's hear the bottom head, how far. So if I mute the bottom head, you don't get the bend. Yeah. It's, it's too high, way too high. Too high? Yeah. So we need to tune the bottom. We're gonna do the same to the bottom one, and then two. Okay. Well, it's loose. Yeah, loose. Ooh, that's crazy high. And it's out. You yeah. You can hear right away. It's like no wonder that it was such a horrible yeah. sounding band. Even after the top head was pretty much close to being in tune with itself. Exactly. My, my first jump set was the guy ripped me off completely by charging me. 1,500 rand, which is $150. Because it wasn't four lugs per drum. Is and, but I had no idea. Like I did, he, he bought it from a school for like 300 rand, which is $30. Mm -hmm. And he didn't, pay, he didn't pay them. So this I only found out afterwards. Uh. So he basically stole the kit and sold it to me for like $150 <laughs> in this piece of junk. But um, I won't name him. I won't sh name and shame him. Actually, I don't even remember his name. So you learn. And then my third kit was the Tama Superstar Custom. Nice. My first new kit, which is nice. I think for sure you're going to have to go higher. Higher. Because we want it a little bit higher than the <coughs> top head, and mm. we went up a uh, quarter plus an eighth on the top. So maybe even like a quarter. Another quarter, yeah. And then pitch it. <coughs> You'll see how I hold on to the lug that I, the one that I tune first, because otherwise I always forget. Oh, it should, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's a good 
Good separation. Yeah. That sounds nice. That's an even. So a lot of people kind of rest their finger. Wow, that actually does help a little. So let's uh, let's tip it back over. Hear what it sounds like. Hit it. You hit it. Dang! Sounds pretty good. Wow! It sounds really good. It does sound really good. And it sounded like garbage. <laughs> it did totally sound like garbage. All right. So yeah. let's see. I think this one. I think number twelve. 12 inch needs to go a little bit higher. Higher. Okay. Not 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 too much higher, but um, so now and 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 bringing the the note of the head up. Um, what's the method? Top head first. Yeah, I would just bring it up. Let's say if you're going to do an eighth turn on the top, do a quarter turn on the bottom. So you know you're going up oh, incrementally. I see, I see, I see. Yeah. Okay. But one thing you guys will find when when you have uh, lower quality drums with old drum heads, tuning them too high is a very very common mistake that makes drums just sound really bad. Mm. It's really hard to to tune um, an inexpensive head and inexpensive drum set high and get it to sound good. Yeah. Um, so with the snare, it's usually the, the you can get away with a lot. Yeah. yeah. But with the uh, toms, it's very hard. So I think my prediction is that this is too much. Yes, my prediction is that too. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna sound twangy. But you never know. You never know. This this kid has been surprising us actually. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds pretty good. Wow. It's not. You know, it's not perfect. It's no. Not, it's not like the drum set you used to playing. But this kit, those toms and that snare sounds ten times better. Yeah. I think with a little bit of muffling, yeah. actually it'll make a huge difference. What, oh, we're the, not going there yet. The, we're not going there yet. But the initial note is gorgeous, but then when that, the, the overtones... Yeah. Mm, we'll take you, care of that. You gotta, and I think muffling will probably be it. But anyways. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go to the bass drum now, which is the, the final thing we're going to be tuning and tweaking. Um, with the bass drum, it's going to be very simple. We have this pillow that actually came with the drum set, and we're going to keep it away from us. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. <laughs> no don't do that. I don't know where that's been. <laughs> okay, so we're going to... I'm going to get like salmonella or something. Is that what you get? No, yeah, that's not what you get. <laughs> so uh, what we're going to do, this is actually a little bit heavy, heavier than what I would use, mm. but in this case, it's what we have. It's what kind of came with the drum set. I don't want you guys to go out to buy anything, any special Italian sheets or anything like that. Or use your current pillow that you <laughs> sleep on in your bass drum. Normally, um, I just use a bed sheet, and I think that works good because it's light, and it, it, um, it's just, this is a little bit too heavy, yeah. too dense. So what, I'm gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to lay this inside of the bass drum like this. I'm going to get tr a part of this to touch the resonant head and part of it to touch the batter head. All right? So it's going to sit in there like that and just slightly dampen each side of the drum. Mm. So let's do that now. I'm going to take off the rezo head and we can uh, throw this in there. So now that I've got the head off, I want to put this in the drum. I want to put the pillow below where the beater hits. So the beater hits right around there. I want to put it always a couple inches below. And then I'm going to put this head on. I'm just going to hold this up. And now it, it fell, and it's now resting right here. You can see where it's kind of pushing out. Yeah. OK? Uh, so with Rezo head, what I like to do is just tighten it um, a little bit tighter than finger tighten. Okay, so these are all still, yeah, they're basically not even quite finger tight yet, so I'm going to tighten as much as I can. Yeah. And go around a few times, because as you tighten some, the others will loosen off, mm. right? 
Okay. And then go around again. And does the same rule apply with regards to the resonant head being tighter than the better head? Is that what you prefer on the kick? Um, I'm not as concerned about that on the, the bass drum. I see. Yeah, that's still too loose. Yeah. Okay? So you can see this head is like extremely thin. And so you might have to tighten it more depending on the, the thickness of the resil head. Yeah. So you see, I'm just kind of going around here and I can see that there's ripples in there. Got to get rid of those ripples. Otherwise, it kind of sounds like the bass drum is farting every time you hit it. Okay. So now if I go around, I'm seeing ripples right here. So what I would do is I would tighten this. Yeah. Oops. Tighten that. I just got rid of most of those ripples. Okay. So as far as tension, it's just a little bit tighter, or finger tighten, and then tighten until you get rid of all the ripples. Mm. And it's not very tight, not nearly like a tom or uh, a snare drum. Yeah. Okay, so let's go around to the, the batter side. Okay, so let's move that floor tom out of the way as well. Okay. And we're going to do a similar thing. We're going to loosen off the tension. Okay, so finger tighten. So dusty. Gross. Okay, let's go around. <laughs> Get rid of the ripples. And if you can pass me a mallet. Do you have a mallet? Well, you have a mallet. In your stick bag? I thought I saw oh, a mallet. Oh, I do. So I'm just going around again. I'm getting rid of the ripples here. You know this? Of course, that has to happen. Mm -hmm. it's At all, least once. Yeah. So below finger tight, and then just yeah. getting rid of the ripples. Yeah. Or the wrinkles. The wrinkles. As we call it in South Africa. The crow's feet. Okay. So yeah, again, it's uh, similar tension to the the rezo head. And here now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap around the edge. I'm not hearing much. Here, it's looser here. Mm. Yeah, it's difficult when you get, the closer you yeah. get to the pillow. Yeah. The less of a note you have as a reference. Okay. But there you go. It's, it's, all, it's already a lot better. It still has way too much attack. Mm. Um, and so you, in this case, we might remove a little bit of that muffling um, just to have a little bit more of a rounder note. So. It, this is something a lot of people are going to be asking us about. Is there a hole in the front head? No. No. There's there isn't. not in, in this front head, and we just left the drum set exactly the As same. It was, yeah. We didn't want to adjust too much, yeah. but you could uh, consider putting a hole in the front head. Mm. Okay. All right, so we have the bass drum uh, tuned, and we've got a little bit of muffling in there, so let's hear how it sounds. So much better. Unbelievable oh how, how much of a difference that makes. Yeah. So what I'm hearing when I'm listening to you play is I'm hearing some of those overtones that a lot of us hear um, when we're playing our drums. And then we yeah. watch your videos, which are, <laughs> you, you spend hours mixing them, yeah, and exactly. mic'ing and, and tuning, and they, the drums just sound unbelievable. Uh, and it's because you were just, well, you started with a really good sound source. Yes, in, in exactly. Drums and tuning. And then um, you've added some compression gates. And stuff totally. Like that. Totally, totally. And so we're going to kind of do the same thing, but we're going to do it in a little bit different way. Uh, so we're going to use... Yes. Oh, nice! <laughs> I wanted to keep this... Obviously, I don't recommend putting toilet paper or tape on your drums. If you can get drum gum or moon gel or some... Or other, just decent heads and you just t tune them right, yeah. If you can, but we wanted to do things in a way where it's just 
easy for you to you know, find some ho household items, yeah, exactly. basic household items, and get, um, get rid of some of these overtones in your drum. Yeah. So we're not going to kill the drums. We're not going to no. make them completely dead. We're just going to get rid of some of the overtones. Yeah. And muffling your drums is never, should never be, should cover up poor tuning. It should always be to enhance the sound of the drums. A lot of people would, would, would their drums would sound horrible, and so then they throw a bunch of muffling on them. And make to, them sound like cardboard. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to do that. No. Start with a good source, like we have, and now we're just going to get rid of a little bit of the overtones. Yeah. Okay, so... I like the snare sounds kind of good. It, it has a little bit of these overtones on it, and... Uh, oh, yeah. So what I would do is I would just actually... Uh, this. You get a piece of tape. You can get gaff tape. You can use duct tape. It, all, it leaves the residue. Yeah. But basically do that. Fold it slightly in the in the middle, mm. and then just stick this on the edge of the drum. We'll see how that sounds. I usually go over the, the sure, yeah. strainer. Just on the edge. You can put it where everyone has their preference where they. Still not enough, so let's rip that off. I'll do something different. Uh, probably around three inches, because yeah. I don't stick it on there yet. Um, like that. And I get another piece of tape. Okay. This is from um, being in the studio a lot, trying to adjust and optimize the drum sound. So then put this there, and I'll put that over it. Okay, so let's stick this on here. Yeah, first. exactly. So you basically just make a little square. Yeah. And then stick that in the middle. Okay. Yeah, if, if, that, if this is not enough, then we have to go to toilet paper, <laughs> which is unfortunate. You don't want to have to go to toilet paper. Oh, yeah. That sounds rad. Yeah. So what I would suggest doing is, is um, probably doing this on each of those toms, okay. just a small piece. I'll give you this. We're gonna get so much hate from the trolls going, why are you guys muffling drums? They're horrible. These are these are like prob these heads are probably ten years old. And that's so. the thing, yeah. We're, oh, we're, yeah. Th this is a great way where you could uh, you could get your drums to sound a heck of a lot better mm. without it costing you anything. Exactly. Right, so is that no one's gonna hate you, Colvis. No one you don't have See, to the hate. The trolls us. don't need a reason to hate. <laughs> they just need somebody to to spew their hate towards. Okay. That's all they need. Okay, so now we'll... There's no rationality there. They're just unhappy people with lots of hatred. Okay, and we'll do this on the, thir on the 13 as well. Okay. I'm, I'm putting the muffling where if you were close micing the toms, the mic would probably be. So that the mics would kind of hide the muffling. So. Okay. That is my thinking. And that's on the floor tom. Because the floor tom rings quite a bit more, what I like to do is just take a little you know, toilet paper and do the exact same thing, fold it into a tiny square. This is going to absorb more of those vibrations. We don't want to get rid of um, everything on the, on the toms just because yeah. they're smaller drums. This is good because if you need to go to the bathroom, you just go to the bathroom. You rip off the tape. <laughs> You're good to go. Hey, man, you got any emergency TP? I really need to go. <laughs> oh, God. Right, so put that on the edge. What I wouldn't suggest doing <laughs> is tape it in the middle of the drums. Like, just like putting this tape everywhere. And Unless you want to go for like that really old school 70s right. dead dry sound, but right. it's probably not what you want. Okay, so now what I suggest doing is play a little bit and see how much better it sounds. I guarantee you it's going to sound, again, ten times better. Better. It sounded like a really good drum set. It totally yeah. does. Okay, so the final thing and most important thing with um, making your drum set sound better. This is where you come in, buddy. This is Big the biggest time. thing. <laughs> okay? This is where you shine is because um, uh, this is how you play it. Yes. Right? And so the not, way that you hit the drums. Yes. Yeah. And so talk a little bit about when you see new drummers or drummers who have been playing for a while but really 
don't have the confidence yeah. behind what they're playing. And I think, totally. And I, the, the biggest thing for me is it, this is extremely natural. This isn't something that you can, that's one quick decision and then it's gone. Um, because because if, you, if you start playing, obviously you're very new to the instrument and it does take a while. But I think the biggest thing in the beginning is the lack of consistency. So mm -hmm. somebody would hit the drum um, in the center, which is where you want to hit the drum, and it would sound really good. But then when they do something that's a little bit outside of their comfort zone, which in the beginning is everything, mm -hmm. then you kind of veer away from the middle of the drum. And so then it starts, you, you start getting these these really uh, irritating overtones because you're moving away from the center of the drum. So I think that's a big thing, especially with regards to uh, the toms. Like if you do falls, then you kind of go closer to the edge and you get these overtones. So I think consistency in terms of where you're hitting the drums is huge. Mm -hmm. With the kick, it's not as much of an issue. Um, but definitely with the snare and the toms, that's huge. Um, the consistency, the next thing I would say is confidence. Yeah. A lot of guys don't play with conviction and confidence doesn't mean, it does not mean playing louder, it just it means it means playing with conviction. And you know what you're playing and it means playing with consistency. And that comes with practice, you can't fake confidence on the drums. Like mm -hmm. you can't pretend like you like you have conviction when you, when you haven't put in the hours behind the kit, you know? So um, this comes with practice. But I think playing with confidence, really know what you're playing, being well practiced, so when you play a full, you know what you're playing. You're not second guessing yourself. Um, it's amazing how big of an effect those things have on the tone of the drums, because uh, you need to be in command of the drum set. If you're not being in command of the drum set, then it's going to sound that way to people listening to you in terms of groove, in terms of tone, everything. Yeah, this comes out of when we were discussing about this lesson. We were talking about how um, in the past we went to look at a drum set and the guy selling it was just playing and it sounds amazing. Yeah. And you get it home and you're like, why doesn't it sound the same? Totally. You're playing with similar beats and stuff exactly. like that. It's because of the way that you're playing it. The conviction, the consistency, and um, another really, really important thing is the, the volume in which you're hitting different pieces of the kit. A lot of new Absolutely. drummers- Absolutely, mixing hit, yourself. Yeah. yeah, they hit the hi-hats way too hard. The bass drum way too quiet and the snare way too quiet. And so you get this kind of, um, non-leveled sound and, and mm. it's not a sound that people are used to hearing and so naturally it just doesn't sound good to exactly. anyone. Exactly. And so can you play a little bit of, I know it's hard for you to do, but can you play a little bit of, you know, not mixing yourself okay. and then maybe four or eight bars and then switch to where now you're mixing yourself, you're adding some of those dynamics, okay. some of the, the, like the ghosting and, and uh, different types of, of snare hits, different volumes, crescendos, and stuff like that. Okay. And uh, just to give them a demonstration of, of how big of a difference it can make. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it's crazy. You can it's hear. It's really it. difficult to yeah. do that because you're so used to playing. Yeah, one exactly. Way. Great. Yeah. So I really hope that this gives you guys um, some practical tips, something you can use right away. Yeah, you can take the kit right now. Yeah. Um, now we had a few bonus tips. We did. Today. We did. We did. Okay. If you have, um, obviously, everything that you've heard up until this point, you can take to the kit right now without spending a dime, which is exactly what this whole lesson is about. If you do have some money saved up um, and you really want to invest it in the sound of your kit. First thing I would suggest is decent heads, mm -hmm. like fresh new heads, top, tops and bottoms, um, really makes a big difference. I, at the moment I use Evans heads, Genera HD on the snare, coated. I use G2s on the tops, which are two ply heads, and then G1s on the bottom. Sometimes I alternate between coated and clear, mm -hmm. depending on what kind of sound I want. <coughs> the moment I have clear heads on the tops and, and obviously clear G1s on the bottoms, but Really just, um, yeah, just new heads, go to a music store, try them out, speak to the guys, see what kind of sound you're going for, and fresh heads tuned well makes a huge difference, mm -hmm. enormous. And then the next thing I would, I would say would be cymbals. Yeah, cymbals, there's not a lot you can do to tune a cymbal. Yeah. So, you know, these are the entry level uh, Sabian cymbals, which are entry level, the, the price is entry level. Yeah. Now you can obviously get get higher in symbols and almost, the sky's almost the limit on what you can exactly. spend. Um, but if you have, again, have some money saved up, you could consider adding just one crash symbol or totally. new ride. Or like, especially like uh, something that you play a lot, like the hats. I remember mm -hmm. like the first time I bought proper hats, I was like, the whole kit sounds better now. Because mm -hmm. like it, it, the, this, this gorgeous tone emanating from the hats kind of influences everything else. It makes it sound like a much more coherent 
drum set. So I'd say that makes a big difference as well, for sure. Cool. Uh, if you guys want some more lessons, there's a link in the description box that you can click and you can sign up for some more free lessons. I'm going to send it to you into your inbox. No spam, I promise. No questionable pictures, I promise. <laughs> um, and just some more free lessons. So just the link is right in the description box right below. And thank you guys so much for the support. I really appreciate it. And um, I'm going to see you some more videos soon. See you later. Cheers.